Comet C 2017 K2 is a perfect test object for my new ASCA astrograph. And I will provide images from the comet along with some deep sky objects. Two months ago, I received shipment of the ASCA 500, which was delivered in a nice aluminum carrying box. The telescope is well machined and with 4.1 kilograms or nine pounds, it's a quite sturdy design. ASCAR 500 has an opening of 90 millimeters. It features a quintuplet air-spaced apochromatic optical structure, a three plus two Petzval lens combination. The front lens group consists of three lenses using extra low dispersion glass. Most importantly, the Petzval design provides an easy operation. No correctors are required. You just have to add a digital camera and you're ready to go. ASCA promises a 55 millimeter flat image circle in support of full frame sensors, which are not very commonly used in astrographs. In my case, I'm using first gen Sigma FP digital camera with 25 megapixel. The camera gets its compactness from the lack of a mechanical shutter. I'm currently using an EQ3 mount with a stepper motor without guidance star tracking, which only allows for a couple of seconds exposure before star trails build up on the exposures. Along with a bright suburban sky background, the seven on the one to nine bottle scale, these are my current limitations, which I have to get around. After some testing, I'm now using the following specs. 10 seconds exposure at ISO 1600. I'm taking 36 images to be stacked with the Sevilla software, which amounts to a total exposure time of six minutes. Let's go to the Punstar comment everybody is talking about. It is a large, object in absolute terms, but not very bright in relative terms. Under my conditions, I wasn't able to see the comment even with a small binocular. So I guess it's a difficult object for most people. The map shows the pass in the southeast and position on July 4th. After some processing optimizations, I was able to get better and better outcomes like this one. The comet has a sharp, bright nucleus and a wide, diffuse tail. The intensity distribution is best shown with a suitable lookup table. How do typical images with the ASCAR look like? Here's an example in the constellation of Ozometer or Big Dipper. You get a wide field of view. And the good news are that stars are sharp into the corners. You often find multiple objects in the same frame. Here, the bluish planetary nebula M97 and the galaxy M106. Such objects are small, but you can always appreciate more details if you zoom in. How good does this astrograph fare in comparison with other equipment? Here's an example of M35, an open cluster in the constellation Gimini. I'm comparing it with an image from my go-to reference site, astropixel.com, which is an excellent resource. I put the link into the description. This image was taken with a much larger 180 millimeter aperture, a focal length of again 500 millimeter and a 10 minutes exposure time using ISO 800. One of the key differences here is in the image acquisition and processing, but overall the outcomes are quite comparable. Where the Oscar really shines is in larger deep sky objects like the North American Nebula NGC 7000. Earlier, I had shared the outcome with the 65 millimeter lens. 
So here, in comparison, the image taken with the ESCA 500, quite impressive. In conclusion, it appears that the ESCA 500 is a capable astrograph which can produce decent results even under non-optimal conditions. Opportunities to optimize tracking for longer exposures and use of filters to reduce background will likely improve the outcomes further. Until next time, clear skies.